In this program, we will look at the installation of third rail on a double O gauge layout and take a look at other items made by Pico to enhance your track side. Pico produces an excellent range of products to enhance your track. Everything from third rail to track side relay cabinet boxes, AWS ramps, TPWS grids, and dummy turnout motors. Pico also produces really useful weathering kits in both steam era and diesel to help enhance the realism of your layout. But before we start, you need the right tools to do the job, and we recommend the Pico Tools Track Layers Toolset, the PT100. A brief history to help us understand third rail. Railway electrification in Great Britain began in the late 19th century. A wide range of voltages has been employed in both overhead lines and conductor rails, which we will be looking at today. Using 750 volts DC, the third rail system used across South England spans 3,758 miles. That's 38% of the British rail network. We start off by making sure our existing rail which is in this example, code 75 bullhead, has already been weathered in ballast. It's not necessary to do this, but in this case, it's already been done. Then work out the position of the conductor rails on your layout. We've provided a diagram to help with this decision-making. To make painting easier, degate the insulators as shown here. Because we are using code 75, we will not need to use the circular base plates as they are required for Code 100 track only. Paint the top part of each chair dark brown and leave the insulator unpainted. Now you need to drill the holes using a pin vise with a drill bit size 0.8 millimeters at the end of each fourth sleeper at a set distance from the inside of the railhead to the center hole of 5.08 millimeters. You can then count the holes so you know how many chairs are required for your length of rail. Once the paint has dried, assemble the conductor rail chairs onto the Code 60 rail. Then, as shown here, space them out approximately every three and a half centimeters. Check you have the correct amount of rail chairs on the length of rail before bending down each end of the rails like this. Then taking the length of rail with the chairs attached, push the chair pegs into the holes by holding the rail. Once positioned in place, take an old paintbrush with some super glue on the end and lift each chair slightly and paint some glue on the base of each track conductor chair. Then push back in place until the glue has set and then move on to the next section. Once all the sections are in place, we recommend a quick test before painting and weathering. When weathering your track bed and rails, it's always best to look at the real thing. We have a selection of photographs here taken from a platform. And as you can see, the third rail is a lot darker in color than the standard rail. You may need to top up the brown paint on the top of each conductor chair before painting the rail a dirty black or a very dark brown. There are a host of products available to enhance your track side. Electric point motors, concrete trunking, relay cabinet boxes are often found near signals and located along concrete trunking. Also in parallel to signals, you will find a TPWS grid. And in front of a signal, the AWS ramps. And here we have a realistic looking third rail with other trackside features. Oh, and just like in the video before, a Southwest Trains EMU class 450. 
We hope you've enjoyed watching this video and we look forward to seeing you again on another Pico TV production in the future.